video, someone that doesn't like the Starks very much ranks them and absolutely breaks my heart. Also fails to remember Benjin. But, you know. Who remembers that poor guy? So what are your opinions on the Starks, All right, Big let's, Spoon? Let's start at the top. All right, so first you have Ned. Loved his character. He was a really, really good guy, but man, was he an idiot. I mean... I mean, he was an idiot, but... He was he was honorable to a fault. You know, some people try to say that he wasn't honorable by lying to his wife. No, he made a promise to his sister. His dying sister, who's then dead. And, and the reality of it is, like... You know that Catelyn would have let it spread and then it would have caused this huge riff. He, the only thing she spread. Yeah, it... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah, you could say he wasn't honorable for that, but it's like, I think okay. He, was. he made a promise yeah. to his dying sister, and he kept that fucking promise. And you want to know what? The fact that he kept that promise till his death, and his fucking spoiled piece of shit daughter Sansa couldn't keep her mouth shut for a fucking hour says a lot. Well, actually, it says a lot because if um, usually people get traits from their parents. So, uh, oh. where do you, where, why do you think he didn't tell Catelyn anything? Yeah, Ned was smart not telling Catelyn yeah. shit. So, I mean, personally, I think the big problem with that particular thing is Ned, as I said, I don't think he is the smartest person. Like, he's honorable to a fault. And the problem is, is he came back with a really dumb story. He's like, oh, yeah, this is uh, a kid that I knocked up with some horse. So, of course, Catelyn hated him. Like, he could have found something better. Like, what? I don't know, but he had, like, a whole fucking however many months it took to get back to King's Landing. Or, sorry, to Winterfell to uh, to come up with something better than, This is my bastard son. Yeah, but that was pretty ex- I mean, a lot of people did have a hard time with it. The Honorable Ned Stark. Yeah, I mean, like, they had a- They had a, um... What was, uh... What if they would have? What if he would have pretended it was a Shara Dane's child? No, because then House Dane would have taken that child. Yeah, yeah. Um. So what? Uh, Theon. What was he considered? He when, was a ward. He was a ward. So he could have been like, "This is a ward," and but it would have to be from a house. Like it would. Ha he would have to have a declared house, and this, I'm taking a ward from this house. Yeah. Like, so it was. It was easier just to say it was a bastard. It was, but he he should have come Found up with a, a better story. That's the thing. I don't think he's also, the the most intelligent. Think about this though. He lost his older brother. He lost his dad. He then lost his sister. There was this big war that happened. He had a falling out with his best friend Bobby B because of the slaughter of the Targaryen children. I don't think he was really in the headspace. Bobby B. Bobby B! <laughs> I don't think he was really in the headspace to come up with this master plan. And he's also really not good with politics in general. But you want to know what he was good? He was the best dad. You know when you read through the chapters and the kids are constantly thinking back to things Ned taught them? And it is the most endearing thing that Ned is still brought up and his people still love him. And for the Ned! And they're willing, the North remembers, because they love Ned so fucking much and the Starks. To me, that says everything I need to know about Ned. Yeah, and I mean, as I was going with this, like, I would say Ned was a great character. I would give him probably, like, a on a scale of 1 to 10 of, you know, coolness, or care, um, how much I liked the character, I'd give him probably a 7.5. So, I liked him a lot. He was my favorite character, but... He was a good character. Moving on to Catelyn. Oh my god. I hate Catelyn. I think she's fine. No, Everyone no, no. She's a great her. character. She's a great character. Trust me. But she reminds me too much of my overprotective mother, and I cannot handle it. So, like, all the Triggered. things she does. No, that's the thing. Like, no, I see her, and I see, like, that is a great character. It is a very well-written character. But I hated every single moment I had to read about her in the books because the decisions she made were so dumb and so, like, blinded by, oh, I love my kids. She didn't think ahead. She just lived in the moment, and she just, oh! She was really good at playing politics, and all that. I will say people don't give her enough credit for being really good with that. That's because she let her children cloud her judgment so much. 
she was, she's a caretaker, she's this motherly figure, and George actually doesn't understand why people hate Catelyn so much. I think the one thing that really I did not like about her was telling John it should have been him when mm-hmm. Bran was in a coma and all that. That was pretty fucked up and how she tortured John. I understand why she did it, because she was so upset that Ned had fucked another woman. But at the same time, she didn't need to treat a child like shit. Yeah. And I mean, I'm I'm not saying she's not a great character. Because I believe she is a great character. But she was my least favorite Stark. Like, I give her a 2 out of 10. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I hated reading her chapters. Well, I, mean, I think, technically she's a Tully, so. I mean, you're right. But <laughs> as I said, I like, I'm not knocking her. She's a great character. But I hated reading her chapters for who she was. I think her chapters were probably my least favorite chapters I read in the books. I also kind of didn't like where she would judge women based off of their hips. Like, oh, she has good childbearing hips. Or, oh, is there anything to be more pity than an ugly woman? So she definitely had that mindset of a woman in the Seven Kingdoms that was very that traditional role of you're here to make marriage alliances, to have good hips, be pretty so that you can find a good husband. So that was a little grating. But you said you liked her. You think as a character, she's she's good. So, no, she's a great character. So she's what, very what well written. So what makes her great as a character? I mean, she is like the classic mom that will do anything for her children. Like, as I said, she is so reminiscent of my mom. I mean, my mom has said on many occasions that if I ever needed a kidney transplant, she would be the first one to give me her kidney because she wants to keep me alive and she loves me and she cares about me to a fault. Oh my so, gosh, she would give up both her kidneys and die for you. Yeah, she would. And that's the thing. Like, that is Catelyn to a T. So while I don't like her character and I don't like her character art arc, and I also don't like Rob Stark. We'll get to that. I'm going down the <laughs> list. Um, I... Uh, I really thought she was a well-written character. Like, I hated her, not because she was a bad character, but because she was the kind of person I don't like, if that makes sense. So, I thought she was a great character, I just don't like that type of character. It's like Cersei. Cersei is a great character. She has, like, all the wonderful, like, crazy in her brain and so much going on, but I hate Cersei. But, you know, that that's just what it is. Anyway, so why let's go going... think Why do you think most people dislike Catelyn? Because it's a very big... Uh, if you watch Order of the Green Hand, they even have a series called Why Catelyn Stark Sucks. Why do you think, just off the top of your head, why a lot of people don't like Catelyn? I think it's because she makes decisions only thinking about her kids and what she thinks is right without any thought of consequence beyond what's going on now she just makes a lot of like dumb irrational emotional decisions also i think a big thing is that she was such a raging cunt to john which is why a lot of people hope as lady stoneheart she somehow makes it to john and gives him the kiss of life and transfers her life to his dead body that'd be cool brings him back but you really got to realize let's let's take it a step back let's say your partner you get you find the Either you have or you find the love of your life, you get married, and then your partner goes off on some sort of trip and then comes back and says, yeah, this is my um, this is my child that I had with the mistress off on that trip. And you decide to stay with your partner because whatever reason, and you have to help raise this kid that is a constant reminder that your spouse was unfaithful to you. Well, and that also pissed Catelyn off because she said, okay, yeah, a lot of lords have bastard children, but lords generally do not let that bastard child live with them. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at it from that perspective, like anybody can say like, no, this, this is garbage. Why the hell would I have to put up with this? So the fact that she put up with it and just treated him like shit and that's it. I mean, I'm surprised she didn't try to poison his water when he was a baby. Or his milk or whatever. Yeah, I feel like maybe Ned should have picked a different house to, like, foster him or paid for him to live somewhere. 
Yeah, I'm like, like I said. Hey, I'm going to pay money for you to be somewhere else. This is my bastard child. But out of respect for my wife, I'm not going to have you live within Winterfell. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a, it was a poor decision. But, but I mean, I, I, can, I can sister. 100% see and relate to, to that. If my wife would would have done that to me, I'd be like, fuck no, we're not having a bastard child. That's not okay. We're going to give it up for adoption. Well, Done. I, I think if the tables were turned, it'd be a little different if Catelyn had the bastard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and you know, the reality of it is um, at, at my wedding day, my grandma said to me, this is the same grandma I talked about earlier. She said um, when they lined everyone up and asked how, how their marriage was successful, my grandma says to everyone, and they quote it to this day, you know, the, the reason my marriage worked is I've never, ever, ever considered divorce. Murder often, but never divorce. Oh my God. I know. Isn't it a beautiful quote? And that's my grandma. I absolutely love my grandma. So anyway, so that's... Uh, Catelyn. Yeah, that, that's Catelyn in a now. nutshell. So now moving on, um, I'm going to include John because he is half Stark. Um... I like his character a lot. Uh, there was there was a part in the book where I started to get a little bit bored of him. Because he's so emo? Yeah, he, he does get really he's emo. He's so whiny. He's so self-pitying. It's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, I think, I think when I started to get bored of him was when he was up at Castle Black and nothing was going on. Yeah, yeah, he was being a little bitch boy about it. Yeah, own temper tantrum, just like whining and whatnot. And then finally, like he goes out and the, does the wildling thing, and then it gets he gets interesting. Yeah, so that's when I started to like his character a lot. So I um I don't know I I like John a lot. He definitely wasn't my favorite character, but I would say he is probably um I would say my second favorite Stark. Um, if you even consider him a Stark even more, or anymore, but he, he definitely uh, is. His mom's a Stark. Yeah. But he's tech- yeah okay. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, he I, he would be my second favorite Stark. I just thought he was a good character, very well rounded. Um, I don't like the way that Kit started to portray him as like just really like jaded and bland and as you like to say neutered. But he yeah, just whiny again. Yeah, I mean he just got really whiny it's and like annoying. His character but, growth went fucking nowhere. Yeah, but I I thought that. As an actual character, like, he was great. He was trying to live up to Ned's ideals um, the best he could, but made much better decisions than Ned. And he, you know, he just, he grew as a character really well, and I liked it. And when he got stabbed to death, I was, like, mortified. I was like, no, they can't just end the the story of the North there. I want to know more. And, you know, now that it's shown that he's come back... I'm like, okay, See, great. I understand but, more in the books why they stabbed him than... In the show, they just made it because he was White Knight. Oh, he believed he was trying to save everyone, and we're racist against wildlings, so we're going to stab you to death. Where in the books, John was continuously making some great choices. Like, John was actually making some decisions that a Lord Commander shouldn't. Like, he helped out Stannis quite a bit in ways that even he thought in his chapters, ooh, I shouldn't be doing this. And then he did it anyways. So in the books, it's more justifiable the for the watch because John really was doing some shit he shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Where in the show, they just made him out to be a savior and the fact that, oh, it's just the racist other Right, it was the, the bad guys in the night. Somebody, watch. I used to have like a really awesome um, subscriber who used to comment on all my videos. And I pointed that out back when that season happened and he got for the watch. And I said, you know, how disappointing it was that they made John just, they whitewashed him to be the hero instead of showing it was more nuanced and that the men of the Night's Watch actually had some grievances with him in the books that were legitimate. And he's like, that's the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard. And for you to even fucking think that, I'm just like, have you not read the fucking books? Like, have you not seen any interviews with George where he talks about how, yeah, John was doing some things? As a, it's just weird the things people fucking go off. Because pe- some people literally want John to just be that fucking white knight, just like Ned. And it's, no. John made some shitty decisions and did some shitty things and some things he shouldn't have done. And, yeah, he, it's sh- terrible he got stabbed to death. And I like John. But I understood it. I feel like it was more justified in the books. Oh, definitely. I definitely agree with you there. So I give I give John an eight and a half out of ten. I as I said, I really liked his character. Oh my goodness! How about John in the final season of Game of Thrones? I, I quite a bit less. <laughs> maybe maybe a six. 
I still liked him, but how many I wildling mean, bitches do you think John's fucking be on the wall now? Oh my gosh, he's gonna have. There's gonna be a million snows. I know. Well, <laughs> they don't have bastards up there. They a kid is a kid if it's strong enough to survive. What the fuck? You know you, you make it past your uh, infancy in a few years, we'll give you a name. So well, he's gonna repopulate. Um, what's the name of that town up there? Starts with an name. Hard home. He's gonna repopulate hard home in like a week. In a week? Is that how fast women give birth now? He's going to well, repopulate Hard Home in I about two women, years. Then. Yes, in about two years he'll repopulate Hard Home because you know all the wildling women are going to drop their pants. Oh, all home. over. I, I have a feeling that him and Tormund will be joint. They're both going to lead their own tribes, yeah. but I don't think they'll be a legitimate king. The bitches will be all over Jim. So that was the first half of my Patreon-only podcast. To listen to the rest of this podcast and other Patreon-exclusive podcasts, please consider donating to me on Patreon. Link in the video description and comment section down below. Thanks.